Hey there, Allie here from bakingamoment.com. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make my favorite pumpkin bundt cake recipe. Have you ever had a pumpkin cake where it has almost like a, I would call it like a claggy texture. It's like very, very moist, but almost gummy and like, um, the crumb is very large and open. I mean, cake is good no matter how you slice it, no pun intended. <laughs> but I really prefer a cake that has more of a velvety texture. I like it to be light and fluffy. I like it to have a very fine crumb and more of a close texture. Still moist, don't get me wrong. And I like it when it's just sweet enough, not overly sugary sweet. And for pumpkin cake, there is no better compliment than a tangy cream cheese icing. It just plays off those spices in just the most delicious way. So this recipe has all of that going for it. It's very velvety texture, fine crumb, bluffy, light, tons of earthy pumpkin flavor, lots of warm fall spice, and a gorgeous cream cheese glaze. Before we get into the how-to, let's talk about the equipment that you're going to need to make this recipe. You will need a big mixing bowl, some kind of a mixer. I like to use a stand mixer, but a handheld mixer will work really well too. You're going to need a standard sized bun pan. I also find that a silicone spatula is very helpful when making this type of cake. Okay, so let's dive into the how-to. If you like what you've seen so far, then I'd like to ask you to do me a favor and just hit the like button. It's really quick and easy to do, but you wouldn't believe what a difference it makes. It really helps me out so much. Now, this cake recipe utilizes the reverse creaming method. You may not be completely familiar with this method of cake making, but I've been making most of my cake recipes this way for many years, probably like 20. It works great and I love it because you only have to dirty up one bowl. Most cake recipes use the creaming method, which starts with beating the butter and sugar together. But with the reverse creaming method, you actually start with the dry ingredients. So into your mixing bowl, you're gonna place the flour, dark brown sugar, regular white granulated sugar, baking powder, baking soda, salt, and the warm fall spices. Those are cinnamon, nutmeg, and dried ground ginger. This is kind of a classic combination of baking spices that complement that earthy pumpkin in just the most beautiful way. If you don't want to use all three spices separately, then pumpkin pie spice will work equally well. Give these dry ingredients just a quick stir. You just really just want to get them combined. Then you're going to add in the room temperature butter. I know it's really different to do it this way, but trust me, it works so great. Work that butter in on like a low speed, medium speed. Just until the mixture sort of resembles like a damp sand. Next, you're gonna put in the eggs. It's best to stir in the eggs one at a time. This will prevent lumps in your cake batter. You're gonna need a total of four large eggs. That's the yolk and the white. I know I'm not showing all four of them going in here, but that's just for the sake of time. Work them in one at a time. Don't add the next egg until the last one is fully incorporated. Once all four eggs have been stirred in and are fully incorporated, the cake batter is gonna be very stiff. It's almost gonna resemble like a stiff cookie dough. Don't worry, you're doing it right. 
Use your silicone spatula to scrape the sides and bottom of the mixing bowl. You just wanna make sure that there's no stiff batter clinging to the bowl that doesn't get mixed in with the next few liquid ingredients. So the liquid ingredients are the pumpkin puree, the sour cream, and the vanilla extract. Stir in the liquid ingredients, turn the mixer up to medium, medium high speed, and let it beat for about a minute to a minute and a half. This is just gonna help to build the cake's structure and aerate the batter a little bit. It's a nice, fluffy cake batter. It's almost mousse-like. It's not real, real runny or liquidy. Transfer the batter into your prepared bun pan. You'll prepare your bun pan by greasing it really well and coating the inside of it with a dusting of flour. Buns can sometimes be a little fussy. They don't always want to come out easily. So you really want to take your time with this step of preparing the pan so that it comes out really easily and beautifully without cracking or falling apart anywhere. This is a standard size bun pan, 12 cup capacity. This cake is really gonna feed a crowd, so it's perfect for the holidays. And I would recommend greasing and flouring this pan really well, even if it is a non-stick pan. You don't wanna take any chances. It's a lot of ingredients that have gone into this and a lot of love. <laughs> Especially take a lot of care around the stem of the bun pan, because that seems to be the place where it really wants to stick the most. So make sure that you're really carefully greasing and flouring that part especially. Once all the batter has been transferred into the pan, just smooth it out a little bit with your spatula and it can go into the hot oven. You'll know that this cake is done baking when a toothpick inserted in the thickest part comes out clean. Once it's cool enough to handle, you can flip it out onto a wire cooling rack. And it's time to get going on that luscious cream cheese glaze. It's really helpful if your cream cheese and your milk are not cold from the fridge. So if you can, set them out ahead of time a little bit so that they can warm up to room temperature. Or you can even zap them in the microwave for like 10 seconds, 15 seconds tops. Whisk the cream cheese and the milk together until smooth. Then you're just gonna add in the powdered sugar a little at a time until you have a very stiff icing. I really like for this glaze to be on the stiffer side, just so it can sit a little bit thicker on the surface of the cake, but also because I find that a thinner glaze can sometimes just sink into the cake and absorb in there, and we really want to see it. Those drips are just gorgeous. They're what makes a bun cake such a stunning presentation. So it should be pretty thick, almost like, um, the consistency of like toothpaste. Take a spoon and kind of drizzle slash spread the glaze over the top of the bunt. I really like to make sure that the hole in the middle of the bunt gets fully glazed and that the outside drips come about, you know, maybe three quarters of the way down the sides of the cake. those drips will come down very, very slowly. So just keep that in mind. Slice into the bun cake and enjoy. It's got the fall holidays written all over it. There's a little bit of a buttery richness to it, that classic 
ball, pumpkin flavor, all the warm spices, just the right amount of sweetness, and that tangy cream cheese glaze, which just offsets that earthiness of the cake in such a beautiful way. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. I love hearing from you. So please leave me a comment. If you're looking for more recipe ideas, definitely check out the Thanksgiving and Christmas categories on my website, bakingalmoment.com. I'll link to it below. And if you're enjoying what you've been seeing here on the Baking a Moment channel, then click that subscribe button so you get a notification every time I come out with something new.